Splatcraft is a Minecraft mod based on Nintendo's popular game, Splatoon. This mod aims to add items and mechanics based on the game in a cohesive way, such as weapons, squid transformation, turf war, and other features. Pressing the Z key will grant you access to the squid transformation, it allows you to fit under smaller gaps, go through iron bars, and swim faster underwater. Equipping an ink tank in your chestplate slot allows you to gradually fill it up with ink, which can then be used as ammo for all of the ink weapons added by the mod. These will cover mobs with a cosmetic coating of ink matching your ink color, damage players with different ink colors from yours, as well as cover most blocks with ink. Inked blocks can serve a wide variety of functionality, while in your squid form, you can submerge into them as long as they match your ink color, allowing you to move faster, jump farther, passively regenerate health, and become undetectable to other players and mobs. Standing on ink of an opposing color, on the other hand, will drastically slow you down and make you take constant damage, it will never be enough to kill you, but you still have to be careful around it. To obtain most of the items provided by the mod, you will have to go mining underneath oceans to obtain and smelt sardinia ore, as well as raid underwater ruins or go fishing to obtain power eggs. Fishing also yields you sunken crates, which can be inked to uncover their contents, which range between large quantities of power eggs and sardinium. There's a total of 24 unique weapons, 21 weapon variants, and 4 ink tanks added by the mod. The currently available weapon classes are shooters, blasters, rollers, brushes, chargers, dualies, sloshers, and sub-weapons. The blaster fires explosive ink projectiles that burst on impact, covering the surrounding area. They can deal significant damage if you hit opponents directly with the projectiles, and they are known for their area control abilities and can be a high-risk, high-reward choice in battles. Rollers consist of large paint rollers that players can roll across the ground to spread ink and cover turf quickly. They are known for their close-range combat abilities, as they can squash opponents by rolling over them, and they are great for covering ground and ambushing enemies in tight spaces. Brushes are a weapon type in the Splatoon series known for their agility and speed. Instead of shooting ink, players use brushes to fling ink in a wide swath as they swipe it across the ground. Brushes excel at quickly covering territory and can be effective in close quarters combat due to their rapid ink dispersion. They offer a fast-paced and dynamic playstyle for players who enjoy quick movement and versatility. Chargers require players to charge up a shot before firing, they shoot long-range beams of ink, making them sniper-like weapons. The chargers are a strategic choice for players who prefer a more methodical and long-range approach to battles. Players equipped with dualies can perform quick dodges and rolls, allowing for increased mobility during battles. They are versatile weapons, offering a mix of offensive and defensive options, making them suitable for players who value agility and flexibility in their gameplay. Sloshers consist of buckets or sloshing devices that players use to hurl ink in an arc over obstacles and onto the ground. The sloshers excel at covering turf, and their unique attack angle allows them to hit opponents who are hiding behind cover or obstacles. They are a versatile choice for both offense and defense, offering a different gameplay style compared to traditional shooting weapons. Sloshers are favored by players who appreciate their ability to control the battlefield with ink splashes. Sub-weapons in the Splatoon series are secondary tools or projectiles that players can use alongside their primary weapons. These sub-weapons serve various tactical purposes and can help control the battlefield. Players can deploy sub-weapons to disrupt opponents, create defensive barriers, or flush out hiding enemies. Sub-weapons add an extra layer of strategy and versatility to gameplay, allowing players to tailor their loadouts to their preferred playstyle and team strategy. On top of all the items, the mod adds a variety of blocks that can be used for map-making and redstone contraptions, as well as to better utilize the mechanics that have been implemented. Inkwells can be used to change the player's ink color, this can be done by placing one down and standing on top of it while in squid form. Finally, this mod also includes various tools to simplify map creation and game mode development, enabling players to recreate the Splatoon experience within Minecraft and expand upon it using the game's limitless possibilities. This mod introducing a new event, the Snow Mercy Invasion. To get to the new dimension, stack three powder snow vertically, encased in blue ice, and let yourself sink to the bottom and freeze. The new dimension is a world covered in ice, where you can find many prominent ice posts. These ice posts all have a common feature, they emit beams of light similar to beacons, making them easy to locate even when they generate underground. 
The heart of ice is the source of the beams, and once it's broken, a large number of snowmen will begin to invade you. The first wave of invaders is relatively weak, however, as the game progresses, their variety will become more diverse. In the first wave of the invasion, you'll be up against exploding frost slimes, snow foxes, and the most basic snowman foot soldiers. They will target the damaged ice posts you've disrupted and gather in large numbers around them, so all you have to do is wait for them. Each snowman will destroy the snow blocks beneath them upon death, so you must constantly watch your step during battles to avoid falling in. After each wave of battles, you can receive rewards in the form of loot dropped from the sky. Of course, as the game difficulty increases, these rewards will also escalate. Ice mortars are a new addition to the snowmen in the second wave of the invasion, and they serve as long-range shooters within the snowman army. The ice mortars can launch ice blocks into the air, and these blocks will shatter into ice picks that rain down like a storm. They can cause significant disruption to the player, so it's a wise choice to eliminate them first. If you choose to continue the challenge, you will face a new member of the snowmen in the third wave of the invasion, Mr. Snuggles. They approach the player like creepers and then explode without hesitation, but their fuse time is shorter. The ice boombox appears in the fourth wave of the invasion. It lacks combat abilities and instead continuously plays music, possibly to help alleviate the tense atmosphere on the battlefield. Mr. Chill Snuggles is an evolved version of Mr. Snuggles that appears in the fifth wave. Its explosion generates ice spikes with a wider radius of impact, making it even more threatening than Mr. Snuggles. Finally, to confront stronger foes, the mod also provides players with better equipment. Coal Burner is a flamethrower that allows you to unleash roaring flames, completely melting the snowman. If you lack it, you'll find it challenging to gain an advantage in battles against the Headmaster. The Headmaster doesn't directly attack players but has the ability to continuously summon all types of snowman foot soldiers onto the battlefield. The summon snowman will protect the headmaster by surrounding it, and all you have to do is use the coal burner to melt them down and achieve victory. This is an unofficial forge port of the animated armor origin. The mod adds a sentient suit of magically animated armor, playable as an origin. The animated armor must always wear the living armor set. While worn, the Origin cannot take health damage, instead, durability is added as a resource on the GUI that will take one point of damage at a time whenever you are hit. When durability depletes at quarter thresholds, the living armor will visually break, debuffing the Origin. The animated armor cannot naturally heal, but must instead use iron ingots to restore their durability resource. Additionally, the armor does not need to eat, meaning they do not exhaust or starve at all. The armor also immune to all status effects, both positive and negative, knockback, and immune to standard arrows. The weight of the armor prevents this origin from swimming effectively, they will sink and walk freely in the liquid without requiring any air. The armor has the ability to be immune to fall damage, regardless of the height fallen from, and the damage it receives remains the same. Additionally, the origin moves 15% slower than a human, unless all armor besides the boots are destroyed, at which point they receive a speed boost. Finally, the origin cannot sleep, but does not suffer from insomnia. This mod is a small mod that adds a little detail from Minecraft Story Mod. When a mob dies, it will play a poof sound when the cloud of smoke appears from the mob. Big Boss is a mod aimed to add variants from the Minecraft mobs. Not only bosses, all mobs have a chance of spawning naturally, and they have special abilities. They drop special items upon death, such as tears from the special ghast, which can grant you invisibility. In addition, be cautious when attacking animals as they now have special variants with no outward changes in appearance but possess unique abilities. All special bosses are significantly more powerful than their vanilla counterparts. For instance, the Magma Lord leaves a trail of flames on its path, the giant phantom doesn't burn in daylight and summons regular phantoms, the special Wither Skeleton calls for Wither to aid in battle, and the special Elder Guardian continually spawns minions. 
so, extreme caution is advised when facing them. This mod expands upon the sniffer with 8 new plants, and other new items found by sniffer as well. Globar Trees, a new tree inspired by trees from the Carboniferous era. It has a brilliant blue woodset and drips a new sappy liquid out of its porous logs, which can be used to make a block that makes you run incredibly fast on it. Lumabulb, a new plant that turns on at night and in darkness. Sniffberry Vine, a new vine plant that produces sniffberries, providing a new effect called sniffing, which shows all nearby mobs. Amber, a new item that can be used to make decorative blocks that glow in sunlight, and can also be used to make mob spawn eggs. Spindle Ferns, a new grass-like twirling fern. Bloom Plants, a tall purple flower used for purple dye. Spine Flower, a short mixed color flower used for cyan dye. Club Moss Patches, which can be placed on grass-like blocks to replace them with a full club moss block. Tuber Fruit, a new food item dropped by the pitcher plant that provides a resistance effect. This mod adds the enchanter from Minecraft Dungeons, they will enchant the hostile mobs and make them stronger. Every once in a while, the enchanter will randomly enchant the hostile creatures around it. When enchanters are killed, they have a chance to randomly drop enchanted books that can be used on hostile mobs. The mod adds a total of 30 enchanters books, some of which enhance monsters while others weaken them. In addition, the enchanter also has a chance to drop mob on ancient books, which can be used to remove enchantments from monsters. Autoclicker is a relatively complete autoclicker for Minecraft that avoid abusing game mechanics and prefers vanilla-like interactions. The mod allows for easy autoclicking for both right and left click actions and includes configurable spam timeout. In addition, you can also set up automatic jumping. Combat Bash is an add-in mod for the Forge version of Combat Roll by Dietilus, the small mod makes the signature roll from a defensive getaway tool into an offensive attack maneuverer. This mod brings back Minecraft's Wasted Tame mechanic, which adds 9 new creatures that can be tamed. Raccoons are found in forests, tame them with melon slices and breed them using eggs. Penguins are found in frozen oceans, tame them with salmon or cod, breed them with tropical fish. Additionally, they can be armed with a ice pop and can use ice helmets. Scarecrows are created by using a purple allay on a scarecrow block, and they can be armed with a big iron hoe. Chicoats can be found in plains and can be tamed with potatoes and breed with beetroot. Also, they can be ridden after equipping them with a chicoat saddle. Shiny beetles are found in mangroves and cherry groves and can be tamed with honeycombs and breed with honey bottles. Roly polies are found in taigas, they can be tamed with oak leaves blocks and can be breed with leaves. Ground beetles are found in mangroves and cherry groves and can be tamed with honeycombs and breed with honey bottles. Giant grasshoppers are found in plains and can be tamed using oak leaves blocks and can be breed with leaves. Additionally, they can be ridden after equipping them with a grasshopper saddle. Quetzalcoatlus are found up in the hills and raise a tamed quetzal after getting the rare quetzal egg drop from them. They can be ridden after equipping them with a quetzal saddle. Butcher's Delight has made changes to some features in the latest update. The entire animal process was reworked, and the mod added goat and hoglin objects. After processing, animals no longer drop their previous exclusive meats, instead, they drop the vanilla meats from the Minecraft. Additionally, it now takes longer to process them.
This mod allows you to hit your enemies even if you are currently standing in a flower field or tall grass without breaking the blocks around you. In addition, it allows you to break the grass with a sword. This mod adds some new items from Dark Souls and Elden Ring. Homeward Bone, use it for 10 seconds to establish a connection to the last bed you rested in. When the time is right, embrace the bone's power to teleport swiftly and seamlessly to the familiar comforts of home. Sacrificial Twig, in the face of peril and demise, you will emerge unscathed, holding onto your precious belongings. However, it pays the ultimate price, vanishing forever as a guardian of your possessions. Repair Powder, this magical powder breathes life back into your gear. As you hold down the right-click button, watch as your item is gradually restored, ready to face countless more adventures. Warming Stone, place it upon the earth to weave a protective aura in a 5x5 five five block radius. Within this sanctuary, your wounds heal, and your strength is rekindled. Gold Pickled Foul Foot, when consumed, it bestows upon the player a double XP boost for 3 minutes. This simple mod adds rooster crowing sounds in the morning and wolf howling sounds in the evening to the game. Status Effect Bars is a client-side mod that adds small customizable bars to the status effects overlay and in the inventory to show the remaining duration of effects. The mod contains three main features, cute little bars, can fix screen to edit colors and bar positions, and bars can be hidden automatically in some specific cases to reduce clutter. Spyglass Binder is a vanilla-friendly zoom mod, the mod allows you to add key binding for activating spyglass from any slot of your inventory. Mob Health Tracker is a lightweight and user-friendly mod that enhances your gaming experience by providing a convenient heads-up display of entity health information. With the mod, you can effortlessly monitor the health of mobs and players in real-time, allowing for better strategic decisions during combat and exploration. This mod adds Herobrine, he can spawn semi-rarely and just stands there and watches you for two minutes or until you get close. He's not destroying the world, and he's not murdering you, it's no half-assed boss fight, he's just watching. This mod adds golden food varieties that can be made using either golden nuggets or golden ingots. Each one of these golden varieties has particular buffs and benefits over others, such as golden bread and cooked potatoes having the highest saturation, while golden rabbit gives you a jump boost effect for a short duration. Village Architect is a mod aims to upgrade villages. The mod adds a new Cherry Grove village in the Cherry Grove biome and overhauls other villages. Villages are now larger and more styled to match the biome they are in, such as the Cherry Grove village is Japanese style.